Now let's look at different strategies you can apply to do passive cooling. Stack ventilation, cross ventilation, and night ventilation, each of which uses different principles. What we'll do is we'll, we'll break this PowerPoint into three videos so that you can watch each of these videos one at a time and focus in on what that particular one is. So we'll start with stack ventilation. And this is based on the principle that warm air rises. In a building cooled by stack ventilation, you'll have a tall structure, a, a tower, a stack, a stairwell, something tall, <clears throat> with openings at the top so that warm air can flow out. And that, of course, creates a partial suction, and that pulls cool air in from the bottom. Because of the way this works, the taller the space is, the greater the stack effect. That's the main um, criterion. You don't need to worry as much with this cooling method. You don't need to worry as much about the shape of the building or what direction it's oriented, because it's all about the stack and the warm air rising. This is a fairly large building near Harvard in Massachusetts. You can see it's a multi-story building. This is a research um, organization. And here in the lower right, you see a view looking up through this atrium space. That atrium space becomes the stack. Surprisingly, if you paint a, a tube, a stack, a dark color like black, you actually get more cooling. And you would think that's the opposite. It, you would think it works the opposite, but no, it doesn't. And here's how it works. As you know, uh, black having low albedo absorbs a lot of solar radiation. And so as this stack heats up, the air is warmer the air rises through the stack, and that creates more of a suction down below and actually pulls more air through. Here's the Zion National Park Visitor Center again. You saw this building last time when we talked about tromb walls, and here in the front of the building is where their tromb wall is. Well, up above that wall is this dark tower they actually have two of them. You can see them in the photo in the upper right. And those are solar chimneys. That structure on the top, painted dark, heats up. The warm air is more buoyant and rises up out of that tower and pulls air from below. And it's interesting that those towers are on top of um, stone columns that kind of look like chimneys. Inside the building, which you see in this lower photo, is a structure connected to that that looks like a fireplace, but it's not. Um, this doesn't provide heat. In fact, those are big openings for air to flow through as it flows up and out through the chimney. As we talked about earlier, um, as wind blows across the top of a building, it creates suction and creates a greater stack effect. And this means that you can use various kinds of ventilators to help pull that air through the top. And it turns out that the kind of ventilator that does the best job is this kind that has a hood um, facing one direction, and it turns in response to what direction the wind is blowing. You remember that uh, last time when we talked about sun spaces, we looked at this development in England called BEDZ, uh, Beddington Zero Energy Development. Here are the sun spaces along the front of the building that we, oops, that we looked at. Well, <clears throat> notice that on top of each of these buildings are these colorful ventilators. They're kind of cheerful looking and they rotate um, in response to the wind, and they help suck air up through those uh, mixed-use spaces. 
if you go to countries in the Middle East and places where it's hot and dry, you will see many of these structures. These are wind towers and they work uh, through stack ventilation. So air flows out through the top and gets pulled in from the bottom. I learned about these from a student who, a Persian student who uh, had escaped Iran and, and was studying drafting here and he showed us these pictures of these wind towers. They can be completely open inside, so just a completely open stack tower, or they can have vanes inside that catch wind from different directions. Here is a research center in the hot desert of Namibia. And let me wander off on a tangent for just a minute here. Um, designers in Namibia are quite creative and some of them are thinking about how can we use biomimicry to provide water and cooling. If you don't know, biomimicry is a, an approach to design which looks at life, bio, how has life come up with solutions to various problems? And then um, says, can we mimic those solutions? So for example, uh, an example of biomimicry in Namibia, which as I mentioned is really dry. There's a beetle in this desert called the Namibia beetle. And this beetle has a creative way of getting its daily water and it has to do with condensation of dew. You know, if you've been outside uh, right before dawn, when the temperature and humidity reach, uh, reach just the right point, the dew point, and drops of water condense out of the air onto your sleeping bag or your car or whatever you've got, well, that happens at certain times in the Namibia desert as well. And right before dawn, this Namibia beetle raises its wings up toward the sky and um, moisture condenses on those wing plates and there are grooves in those wings that direct uh, the con condensation back down towards its mouth. So um, dew point happens, water condenses on its wings, it rolls down into its mouth. And designers in Namibia are now working on various kinds of, I think they call them fog screens, uh, that work like the beetle's wings to capture condensation. Here's a similar uh, cooling tower, this one at Colorado State University. So again, there's a wetted pad at the top. The wetness causes the water to evaporate and uh, that makes the temperature cooler. That makes the air become more dense because it's cooler and so it falls down the tower. Here are two examples in Las Vegas. The one at the top is the Desert Living Center. The one at the bottom is a place for uh, dogs being adopted and each of these colored towers has a wetted pad inside and it brings cool air down into the place where the dog is living. And then you notice they also have solar panels providing power to the place. Finally, uh, this is a cooling tower at the Ecology Center at Stanford University. This is not down in the main campus. This is up in the hills in that 8,000 acre uh, area known as the farm where it's pretty dry. And so this center has cross ventilation through the bottom and then one of those cooling towers at the top. Here's a view looking in the lower right of the slide here. Here's a view looking up through that tower looking at that wetted pad. All right, so next we will, in the next video, we will go on and look at cross ventilation.